Hi everybody, so as promised, I'm going to be reviewing my very own homemade pink corset today. So here is the front, the side, the back, and the other side. So I'm going to try and review this in a similar way that I review any of my other purchased corsets. So starting with the fit of this, it's slightly long line. Um, it extends slightly below my upper hips, but not too much, not right down to my lower hips. So I can still sit down fine and move around in it like I wanted to, because I originally wanted to make this corset to go to a concert and I knew I was gonna be jumping around for about six hours. So it actually worked out really well. Um, I drafted this pattern myself. It's 14 panels and it fits like a glove. It's very, very comfortable. And um, I used 14 rudimentary measurements. I used uh, measurements for my upper rib cage, lower rib cage, waist, upper hips, and lower hips, both circumferential and vertical. So that's 10 measurements. And also I measured the height that I wanted the center front, the center back, um, in both the, the top and the bottom of the corset, so that's 14. And then I had to um, separate some of those into front circumferential measurements and back circumferential measurements. So, um, so that was basically how I did this drafting. So it wasn't really that hard. Um, I used some of the knowledge that I got from Foundations Revealed and their drafting tutorial, and then I just kind of went with it and uh, did a couple of modifications with the mock-up. The one thing that um, isn't fitting quite perfectly is this center back here, right at the top, right at the upper rib cage. Because when I had done a mock-up for this, I didn't realize that the material was going to stretch so much. I used a canvas instead of a coutille for my mock-up because I didn't want to waste my good coutille. And um, in mock-ups, you have to be careful about the, the top in the back and the bottom in the back slight, uh, slightly stretching because of the way that the panels are cut. They might be slightly on a diagonal while the waist is still true. So I will get more into that when I do a mock-up tutorial, which I am planning to do sometime in the next two months or so. So for the material of this corset, it's three layers, not including the glue. <laughs> There's a polyester cherry blossom brocade here as a face fabric, and that was fused using heat and bond light to one layer of coutille. I should have interfaced the cherry blossom brocade first, and honestly, the heat and bond was not a good choice because it didn't bond well enough for the two layers of material to stay together until the stitching was finished. The only other heat and bond I could find was the no sew version, which is extra strong and it will actually break your needle if you try to sew through it. So I've been experimenting with stitch witchery and wonder under and some cheaper nameless version of that sort of web of glue. And I very much recommend using one of those if you can, not heat and bond. And if you can see on the inside here, on the inside, the last layer is a sturdy cotton twill for the lining. The Monesty panel, some of you may have seen this before, is my homemade floating panel. If you want to learn how to do this style of Monesty panel, then just click right up here in the upper corner. For the construction of this corset, the face fabric fused to the coutille, I had flat felled all the seams together. It is incredibly strong, but it's also an incredible pain in the butt to do flat felled seams for all of them. It was the first time I also made external boning channels, and it turned out rather well, although next time I won't be putting the boning channels directly over the flat felled seams because that resulted in having to sew through at least eight, I think, layers of fabric, which nearly broke my sewing machine. <laughs> the binding I made myself using the same fabric as the boning channels and the lining on the inside, and I'm kind of proud of myself at how even I got this here matched up perfectly at the top and also at the bottom here. I had machine stitched the front side, and then on the back side, I had hand stitched it. Inside, I made a floating liner, so it's not attached to the rest of the corset, and it's made out of the same hot pink material. It was easy enough to make, but it's not the most precise way of making a corset because the twill acts differently to coutille, so time will tell if I'll do this style again. You can also see the outline of the waist tape underneath the liner. Um, I can't really feel it when it's on my body. It's not uncomfortable in any way. In my opinion, it's better to have the waist tape visible from the inside than visible from the outside. 
For the boning, this is not a waist training corset. It only has 14 bones. So there are five bones on each side made from spirals. And then on the back, you also have four flats. I think I could have easily incorporated four or even six more bones in this corset. The back wrinkles at the waistline when it's on me um, means partially that there is not enough vertical support. So um, I know what to do next time I make a corset using this pattern, but this was a good experiment anyways. For the busk, I have 10 of these short flexible busks and I'm trying to use them up quickly. The busk runs from here at the top down to only about there. So the busk should be a good one and a half or even two inches longer here at the bottom. But once again, I thought I would do an experiment. Instead of having a bone reinforce the busk all the way to the bottom of the corset, instead I left it just as fabric and then I put a heavy duty hook and eye here on the inside. Um, for those of you who had seen my preview of this corset on Facebook, you would have seen that the hook and eye was on the outside, but um, due to somebody's recommendation, I decided to put it on the inside so it won't be such an eyesore. So the bottom inch or so of this corset beyond the hook and eye, it still bends up a little bit um, when I sit down, especially if I'm wearing something like jeans. But the thing that I like about this hook and eye is that um, this is a long line corset and so it's kind of difficult to take off your pants when you're going to the bathroom and <laughs> if you're wearing a long line corset. But the awesome part about this is um, I don't have to undo the entire busk, I just have to undo this hook and eye and then I have access to my fly on my jeans. So I have the look of a long line corset with a convenience of a waist cincher. Um, would I recommend this method to others? Probably not, but for my purposes, personally, I think it's amazing, especially when you're at a concert and you need to go to the bathroom really fast so you don't miss too much of the show. This is a lifesaver. In the back here, I use 26 um, gold colored size double zero grommets and you can see here they're all equidistant about an inch apart except for right here the four right at the waistline or rather the eight um, those are three quarters of an inch apart because the closer you have the grommets together at the waistline the more that they can distribute this extra stress at that waist um, and I chose three quarters of an inch instead of half an inch because I didn't want it to look like it was um, really uneven I wanted it to still look quite nice at the back so it was a bit of a compromise in that respect. Um, I would rather have silver or even pink grommets instead of gold, um, but I have 500 gold grommets to finish off and unfortunately I didn't have any um, pink lacquer to go over the metal here. Also I love the look of small grommets, I really like how delicate they look. Um, so the back isn't just really overwhelmed with grommet. <laughs> but. Um, I think once I finish off all my double zero grommets, I may switch and start using the size zero grommets so that it's easier to lace the fat cord through. So I hope you enjoyed this video on my pink corset and I will talk to you all later. Bye.